have it as being there. We haven't started. I don't see. I we haven't started. Realistic. Okay, we are we are on air now. Good. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching TV Three New Days. Now time for big issues. This is a very important segment. Uh, this is where we talk about the important issues in the country: political, social, economic, and so on. And on Thursdays, we have our ladies join us on the show. Uh, before we came back from the break, we were already. Um, <laughs> neck deep into our discussions for this morning. We're going to be talking about two very important issues. We're still looking at the NPP manifesto, which was launched last weekend in the Western region. Some of the promises that um, Dr. Baumia has stated out in his manifesto. Specifically, we're going to look at education and also a uh, number of ministers of state. So for education, he, st he stated that his government will pledge or is pledging free tertiary education for persons living with disabilities. Um, funds supposed to be sourced from the Get Fund Scholarship Secretary alongside some other general scholarships available for all persons living with disabilities in tertiary institutions. Also, he spoke about the number of ministers that he will work with, and he says he will work with no, not, not more than 50 Ministers. We know that Alan Chamanti has also spoken about the number of ministers that he will work with. He's talked about merging some uh, some of the ministries or, or taking some out. He's not going to work with more than 40 ministers, he said. We'll look at these two topics. But before before that, um, there are a couple of conversations we've had that we perhaps we want to touch on uh, before we go into our, our, our topics. I'll first introduce my guest here to you. First, Rodelyn Ayana, member of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rodelyn. Hi. Morning. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Great to see you as always. Yeah. Good to be here. Also to in the to studio. Share ideas. To share ideas. Yes, very <laughs> important. Also in the studio this, this morning is Nanaya Achimpim Jantwa, the former General Secretary of the CPP. Hello, Nanaya. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. I like your bag today. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I bought How much was it? At Kantamanto. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, I did. Oh, no, you did not. Oh, why? You did not. Why? You why? didn't you did buy it at Kantamanto. I bought it at Kantamanto. Why? Did, why? did you buy it with me? No, I didn't. But oh. we, go we, go we the, all go to Kantamanto. Go to the first know. election. You find so one. First election. Yeah, first maybe election. next time. Give I'll me take your, you your, along. Your, your plug. Give me your plug. I have a guy there. He has first election. All right. Also joining us on the show today, the first time I'm hosting her on the show today. I'm very glad to have her. Zita Benson. Um, she is a former information minister, um, former ambassador to the Czech Republic, yeah. and among other things. She has done many things, <laughs> and she's looking as lovely as ever. Thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. This is the first time I'm hosting you, yes, so this is yes. a formal welcome yes. um, to you. By the way, if you haven't dialed Star 439 this morning, you want to do so now. Star 439 is a short code which allows you to win at least 1,000 Ghana cities if you're on NTN or Telesel. We give away 4,000. Ghana cities every morning, so it could be you today. So dial now, star 439 hash, select option two, that's TV3, that's the network you're watching us on, and then follow the prompts. It's as simple as that. You can win on the show this morning. Now, before we get into our topics, before we came on air, we were talking about the peace accord um, conversation, which has been going on for a while now. The NDC has said that they will not sign unless certain um, criteria which they have laid out are followed. Otherwise, they will not sign. Uh, Zita, you're yes. here. Perhaps you should touch on it first, mm -hmm. and then and then and then we'll go around. Are, are you still holding on to that position? Yes, I do agree with my chairman, national chairman, on that position. Um, reason being that um, the peace council have not proven themselves um, to live up to expectations. We have a country where this current president, Nana Dudankwa, has said that he's not handing over power to anybody except Baumia. He is the commander-in-chief of our armed forces, of all security agencies, and he has said that he's not handing over power to anyone except Baumia. That is a threat to our security. Under our constitution, sovereignty lies in the hands of the, uh, the, hands of the uh, Ghanaian people. So if they decide that they won't change, and the man at the helm of affairs says that he's not handing over. And we go to December um, 7 elections, and the people vote for change. And he decides that he's not handing over. You don't then, think it was mere political talk? No, it's not. You see, um, he should, if 
it's me, then, then that's very irresponsible. Because he's the leader of the nation and he needs to be responsible as a leader. Because when you say these things, you incite people. Because what about if the opposition also decides that we also not sit back? Because we are also not fools. Do you understand? We are not fools. We can also decide that we will not sit back for him to say what he's saying. We will prepare and wait for it. Because okay. we are not going to let anyone... Prepare write. and wait for it. Yes, we'll prepare and wait for it. If we win and you tell us you won't handle that, you think we'll sit down? We will not sit down. Well, we are, it, it, does it like the NDC has, is full of weaklings? No. We, will, we would also protect our interests the same way they want to protect their interests. So number two, you have a minister of state, Brian Achampo, who has said three times within the last year that they are not handing over. He said this to a, a, a crowd of um, supporters, MPP supporters. I don't know whether they say it, you know, because they know they are losing the election, they say it to give their people hope that even if we lose, we are not going to hand over. So you just be cool. We are going no, to make this sure. This is a democratic government. Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Whichever party wins the elections. Is, exactly. Is, is, but that's, that's the point I'm coming to. Uh -huh. Just last week, I, um, their youth organizer, Salah Mustafa, also reiterated the same thing, that if they do lose the election, they will not hand over. We are not handing power, power over. But you see... What is Salam say that? Yeah, yes, I saw, I saw it. it. It was in the news, and I haven't seen any any rebuttal or anything, anything, yeah, I think any I'll, denial. I'll pull exactly what pull, he said pull, and, and pull, share pull, with you. Pull it up. But the point I'm making, the point I'm making is that um, they should be more responsible. They are in government. It is their duty to ensure there's peace in the country. And what is laughable is that December seven, um, I have what what's going to happen is that. One party will win. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins and is declared a winner, nobody is going to hand over anything. So I just want to assure the NDC people, if everybody should go out and vote massively, if you go out and the numbers are clear that NDC has won, nobody can sit down and say that we are not handing over nothing. Because at the end of the day, what happens after December 7th election, when the leader, uh, a winner is declared, is that on January 7th, we all go to the independent square and the chief justice is the one who swears in the, the new president. So I really don't see what this whole handing over thing is about. It's up to the chief justice to ensure that whoever wins the election is sworn in on January 7th. So as for the Peace Council, look, my sister, there's, there cannot be peace without justice. Eight people died in the 2020 election, including a 14-year-old um, from Ododododio. And I saw a member of the, I saw a video of the, a member of the um, Peace Council saying that, oh, we should put all these things aside, you know, the usual Ghanaian attitude, uh, put it aside and let's forge forward, let's put it behind us. No, human lives are we're involved. Lost. Human lives are involved in this thing. Eight lives. Some of them were breadwinners. M who knows? Maybe that child who died was the only child of, of the mother and cannot come back. The human lives are involved here. So as Peace Council, you don't say that, let's put it behind us and forge forward. Eight lives were lost in 2020. Do we know how many lives this government is, going, is willing to, to uh, uh, no, no, sacrifice? No, no, no. no, do, you, no. do you understand? No. Let's, let's not okay. say that. Let's okay. Not say that. Okay. So what I'm saying is that the Peace Council should live according to its mandate. Its mandate is to ensure that they prevent conflict and also resolve conflict. And so far as I'm concerned, there's been beating of war drums by high profile people in this government and the Peace Council has not sanctioned anyone. All the people saying that we are not handing over, I haven't seen the Peace Council sanction anyone. My chairman has given conditions um, under which we would sign that piece of paper. Yes. Um, if that is not done, well, I, I support my party, I support my chairman and I believe that Justice must be, um, we, we, we must have justice in the um, case of the lives that were lost in December 2020. We must see them asking government to um, account for those lives and uh, the, the people who were involved must be brought to book. Okay. Otherwise, I don't see why they want us to go and sign another paper in 2024. We are tired of signing the papers that's without any action from the Peace Council. Okay. So, so that's, that's one, one side of it. But what do you say to people who also recommend or say that because of these things that have happened in the past, mm -hmm. we must agree 
regardless of what party you, you support, mm. to sign one document which says that going into December, uh, the December 7th elections, we will all uphold peace no matter what. Okay, so what I would say to that is that, so far as I'm concerned, my, my party has not shown any signs of um, um, going to engage in conflict or anything, any sign of violence so far. And it is rather government in power that, you know, have been beating the war drums. So yes, but we, for we, all we, Ghanians. for it's all Ghanaians, we, 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 we have been signing that document. We signed that document in 2020. Lives were lost. We didn't see anything that came out of that document. Mm. Okay. So what I'm saying is that the Peace Council should prove themselves. They should assure us. It's not just about going to sign a piece of paper. They should assure us that when you do sign this paper and anything happens, we would make sure that people, people are, are brought, brought to, to book. book. All right. Some of the recommendations by Honorable Sidney Kutia include the fact that the investigation into the violence during the Ayawaso West will go on by election will be fully implemented, that those responsible for the election-related violence in 2020 will be prosecuted, stressing the importance of justice and prevention. Also, that there must be accountability regarding irregularities in printing of ballot papers with visible measures taken to prevent such me measures issues from recurring mm -hmm. and a thorough investigation must be conducted into the missing IT equipment from the Electoral Commission warehouse addressing concerns about integrity of the EC systems and that the president Nanado must publicly declare his commitment to respecting the outcome of the 2024 elections and the peace pact should be signed by key figures, including the president himself, mm -hmm. the inspector general of police, the chief justice, the national security coordinator, and the attorney general before the NDC will consider adding to its signature. So these were the recommendations made by um, the NDC party chairman. All right, uh, let me come to you, Nanaya. Uh, but... <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Do you think we should sign a peace pact? Let me say good morning to your viewers and good morning to everybody. Good morning to my auntie, Auntie Rodalyn, and good morning to my sister, mm -hmm. um, Zita. And good morning to yourself. You see, every Ghanaian should agree with what I should speak up. Uh, I am so sad I can't speak up. You see, every Ghanaian should agree with what yes. uh, um, um, I said. I said, I said. Every Ghanaian. You get it. Every, you see, the condition precedent for signing the peace pact is very, very necessary. Because in 2020, a peace pact was signed. And what happened? You see, these people, they've turned themselves into Goliaths. Goliaths? Yes. Mm -hmm. Every day, they'll come and bellow down at us. Talk down at us. Tell us that, yes, we are going to win the election, whether you like it or not. Disrespecting us. You see how Goliath used to behave. Yes, <laughs> but there will be a David who will deal with them. Mm -hmm. There certainly will be a David. God is not is not dead, though. God is alive. What uh, Honorable Isaiah Duketia is saying? What is wrong with it? There's nothing, absolutely nothing. You kill eight people. You don't care. When we talk about, you say, oh, these are a few people. No, eight people lost their lives, but we shouldn't say that you kill eight people. But that's what happened. Uh, how, how did they that's lose their happened. lives? They were killed were by they the security sick? agents. Did they get cancer? They were shot. Or they got they uh, shot. Uh, uh, malaria. That's what me, happened. What disease killed them? They just died. Somebody shot at them. And they died. <clears throat> Do you get it? And the state should be responsible for the security of Ghanaians. Now we are going into another election. Four years down the line, nobody knows who killed whom. Nobody knows who died. And you see, what Zita is saying is true. How do we know that people are not going to be killed? And you said she shouldn't say that. She will say that. She will say that because, you see, the life of eight Ghanaians, very, very precious. Even yes. one Ghanaian should not die because of an election. If one was not important, our election results... The qualifying mark should, shouldn't have been 50 plus 1. If you get 50, I get 50. One of the eight could make one of us a president. And these people are dead. People are maimed after the Ayahuasca West Wogon issue. Nobody cares. How can we have people ruling us? People that we have employed. Paying them. Giving them money to eat. 
sit in big cars cars that they never dreamt of sitting in wearing clothes that they never dreamt of wearing traveling business class with our taxes making themselves comfortable and they come killing us me i agree with this 100 percent he should even add that the peace council themselves should also append their signature the peace council head is my big brother I am saying that they should also append their signature. They should be the last people to sign. Because if they, they don't put their signature there, then there's no commitment on their part to ensure that there is peace. You see, Na Shoko, today I've mentioned your full name. I always call you Na. When you are cheated in this life, eh, it is very, very, very painful. It's painful. 2020, everybody knows what happened for people. Because me, I will say, that why should parliament be like this? If like what? The way it is, a hung parliament, if you have a hung parliament, then it means that you have a, a, an election that would have gone into a second round. At the least. At the least. Me, I'm so sad that even the NDC will start saying we are minority. What is minority? What is sitting there is hung parliament with one independent. I will not stop saying it. When you go to electoral commission, you have one independent, 137, 137. We are same. But I am saying that if you have a hung parliament, then it means that the, the election itself, the presidential election, there was something wrong. And nobody is going to sit down this time for MPP to come and rule over us anymore. Because you see, we are hungry. Life is difficult. And they don't give a hoot about what we do, what we say, where we sleep. It is none of their business. They sit in their ivory tower and they forget about the rest of us. They forget about the rest of us. Look, now nobody, they are not going to come back. You see, if there is a higher hand, they think that nothing can deal with them. There is a God. If you are not afraid of anything, when Goliath was always bellowing down the Israelites, he, he didn't know that there was somebody called the God who could equip a David to come and deal with him. Because, you see, they cannot subjugate us. You see, our, our national anthem, it tells us that we should resist the rule of the oppressor. When Kwame Nkrumah was there in 1957, the rule of the oppressor was the colonial man, the white man. Today, the rule of the oppressor is hunger, is disease, is poverty. You don't even find a place to live. It's shelter. We don't have shelter. We, we don't have anything. Today, their own Ahiyamba, Richard, Let's all pray for him. He's come out of hospital. And now he is himself is saying that he didn't know that our medical system was so bad. Yeah. Because when they are sick, they use our money to fly outside to get treatment. Those of us who don't have the opportunity, we stay here and we sit in a medical system that is not good, not fit for purpose. But we manage anyhow because that is what has been bequeathed to us. And now I am telling you, this MPP, they get up and they say we are going to win. What, what election are they going to win? By whom and by what? <laughs> by whom and by what? They are not going to win any election. Ghanaians will come out and vote against them for everything that they have done to us. For every pain that they right. have given to us. No, I'm serious. We should not joke with this one. This is Ghana we are talking about. This is the second independence for this nation. And nobody should joke with it nobody we are not going to allow we are not going to let them subjugate this nation anymore enough is enough uh, Nana, uh, Nana, i don't think i've i've heard you talk this passionately since, yes of course because you um, see before, now i i know what goes on on I, the street I, I, I understand i understand now i'm telling i know i see people who are hungry when you put momo on your phone now i'm telling you the people that you didn't even think will ask you for money are asking you for money well that's true they are asking you for money. Me, I never did Momo. Even as general secretary, when I'm doing something, I did it cash. But for some reason, I said, let me try it. Look, if you put money on that phone, you will give it out. I am telling you, every money I have put on my Momo phone has come as gifts. Today, 100. Today, 50. And you, you, the money that people are asking for. It's not much. Yes, and it's so pathetic. Yeah. My, I know they want to me, I mean, did it. People have become beggars. Everybody is a beggar. What kind of life is this? And you think we are going to vote for you again? All right. No, not all right. No, seriously, this is not all right. It is never all right. I didn't say it was all right. I'm saying all right to you. Like, bring water, bring water. <laughs> just, just take a moment. No, how can take, you treat us? No, now, you see, all the promises that MPP gave to us. 2016, we were all elated. We were very happy. 
We thought they were going to change the trajectory of events in this country. We thought that they were going to make sure that we were okay. Are we okay? They are okay. Are we okay? They are rich. Are we rich? We are poor. Even be rich and let us be okay. Let us be sustainable. Be rich and let us be sustainable. Let us be able to find food to eat. Let us be able to look after ourselves. And you be rich. We will be fine. But where they have taken us to, please, now nobody, they should not even think about it. All right, Nanaya. I'm, I'm going to come to you, Rodeline, and then we'll get into the manifesto promises on number of ministers as well as... That is even the most annoying one. for persons living with disability. What's annoying, Nanaya? The number of ministers. The number of ministers. We'll Everything come to that. they are we'll talking to about. That. We'll come to that. I, I want to give you a minute to... Calm down. No, but no, aunties, it's annoying. I, I, Nanaya, it's okay. Eight people died. Nobody cares. Ghanaians. Where will you ever find this? In which country? Are we pigs? All right. And God only knows what they, are, they want to do in 2024. God will stop them if nobody stops them. All right. Rodeline. I thought they don't believe in God because they have built it. They said yeah. they built something for him and it is lying. They're breeding mosquitoes all over the place. All right, Nanaya. So, so in, in, in conclusion, the recommendations that Asiyad Nketiah has made is right. Um, you agree with it. And should those recommendations be followed, then a peace pact can be signed. All right. Okay. Good morning to our viewers and to Mr. Alan Tremartin, the incoming first independent president of Ghana. Um, I, I can feel their pain. It's, it's, it's painful to lose lives, especially young people, as it, as it were. Um, I personally, we have not as yet taken a position on this issue. On the issue of the on pact? On the issue of um, the, peace pact. the peace pact, because it has not been addressed to us. At the moment, I know they are talking to NDC and NPP, which is a mistake, because they ought to be talking to everyone who is involved in this year's elections. When I listen to young people like um, the youth organizer of the MPP talk about um, winning by all means, facing them squarely and all that, it, it, it just amuses me because I wish he were sitting here and I would ask him where he was in 1966, where he was in 1969, where he was in 1979, where he was in 1981. If he experienced any of these, because he was born in 1995. You understand? He has not seen anything when it comes to civil disobedience or civil strife or whatever you call it. We've had coup d'etats, just coup d'etats, not wars like our neighbors. Coup d'etats. And what we have seen, some of us, we don't want to even experience it. We don't even want anyone to talk about taking this country on that path. So it, it's, it's a bit worrying when people who should know better would stand on a platform just because they've got people in front of them addressing them and say that we won't hand over well, of course they'll hand over to alan Chamartin if he wins and when he wins there's no one in this country who's going to say i'm not going to hand over to anybody because it is not their privilege to do that it's the privilege of Ghanaians who vote for those people so i think that what the ndc is requesting is within their rights to do so because Ghanaian lives were lost. It pained me that a president who is supposed to represent all of us did not even issue a statement of condolence to the bereaved, did not even show any sign of regret for what happened, and that instead people were rather bold to think that they deserved it. That's wrong. It is not part of democracy. So I think that maybe the only part that I find a bit too long is that if the president signs, he signs for the military as well as commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. When he signs, he signs the same for the, the IGP. He signs the same, goes for national security coordinator because they, call, they all come under him. Mm -hmm. He gives the last word before the CDS can move anybody. He has to confer with the commander-in-chief, which happens to be the president. So if there should be any signing, I think that the president should sign and should make it known to all Ghanaians that whoever wins this election, I am handing over power to peacefully. 
I also believe that the EC must also be made to sign to say that she's going to hold a free, fair, and mm -hmm. transparent mm -hmm. election, and that she's going to be fair in all ways, not ballot papers not going to certain places, not certain places starting late. We don't want any hinges come that day. We want a free, fair, transparent election. Britain just went through an election. Did we see any peace pact being signed? We call ourselves matured people. We call ourselves people who are educated. Should we always sign documents, pieces of paper, to guarantee us peace? Meanwhile, we taunt ourselves as a country, as peaceful people. Organa is a peaceful country. What is the peace? Why is it that any time we are getting to an election, then the tension is up? It means that we are not doing something right. And what we are not doing right is that our leaders have suddenly taken this action because they feel it's an entitlement. We must win. It is ours. Ghana belongs to us. Ghana doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to all of us. And all of us have a duty to make sure that this country stays safe. So if I go political, I will say, why should Ghanaians be put through this whole hula baloo of tension? We will hand over. We will not hand over. Ghanaians, vote for the alliance. <laughs> Let the two of them go home and sleep and think about how to come back as one people. We don't need any stress. <laughs> so that's my only advice. That if you want peace, if you don't want all this strife, just vote for Alan Tremating and the alliance. All right. We, we spent a little more time than I hoped we would, but this is a very important conversation yeah, yeah, and important things have been said. And so we'll quickly move on to our two topics for today. We have exactly 36 minutes to go, so we'll try to use our time properly to address both of the topics. Well, let, let's start with um, Alan Chamati, well, but, um, Dr. Baumier's mm. proposal yeah. or pledge, really, mm. not to work with more than 50 ministers. Yeah. And that comes after Alan Chamati proposed his lean government with only 40 ministers, specifically to cut costs and redirect resources to other aspects of the economy. Um, shall, I, shall I begin with you, Zeta? That's fine. Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't know why Baumia is behaving as if he's in opposition. Baumia goes around promising stuff. When he's currently the second person in command of this country, and he can do so many things, but there, Baumia is every day promising, promising, promising. And I feel that is very dishonest on his part. Because Baumia has the power to do whatever he wants to do now. Baumia says he's going to work with 50 ministers. Yeah. Baumia, for the past eight years, has been, they have been working with 125 ministers. Not only that, they have special assistants, they have aides, the special assistant has a special assistant, the special assistant's assistant has a special aid. Is and, that correct? Yes. And they are all being paid with the ta taxpayer's money. 120 minister, 125 ministers, do the math. They all have um, government houses, cars, they, they, they are giving free for well. they, uh, they, they, they fly they business, they travel yeah. abroad. They're giving per diem. The money, the, the, the amount of money that goes into taking care of those 125 ministers, if Baumia really had anything good to offer, would have said, because that's the duty of a vice president, would have advised his boss and said that, listen, I think this, this is a drain on the economy. We are trying to save some money. Can we do something about it? Baumia sat through it all for eight years and is now turning around to come and tell us that when he comes, he's going to work with... 50 ministers. He says he does not have control currently. No, he, he does. He does. He, you can advise, you can advise the, uh, um, the president. Then, 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 the president then, says the back stops with him. Well, that, 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 that may be how the structure is. But so far as I'm concerned, Baumia is not innocent of what has gone on in the past eight years. 
But Omiya is not. Because in fact, most of the promises that were made by this government, that brought MPP into government, were made by Baumia himself. When he had he held those um, economic talks and brought, came up with 170 questions and promised that he was going to turn the economy around, a uh, uh, dollar at 3.8 was too uh, too high, and he was going to bring it down. Today, dollar is 16 CDs. People's businesses have collapsed. Um, uh, uh, people at Abosi Okain, who put money together and gave to this government to uh, campaign, now most of them are out of business. So Baumia himself was one of the reasons why people voted for, for um, um, uh, Nanadu. So he owes the people of uh, Ghana an apology for misleading them. Because as we speak today, Baumia cannot speak about the economy again. He can't. He only dances on, on campaign platforms. That's what we see him do. Because he knows that people are saying that, look, come and tell us why the, the, the city is it's 16 to 1. Back in 2016, if you had $10,000, that was um, um, 38,000 Ghana cities. Today, how much is $10,000? 160,000 Ghana cities. So if you are like a trader on, on the China route and you, you want to go and um, go for goods, if you don't have 160,000 Ghana cities, you can't get $10,000 to go to China to, um, to go and get your goods. Things have gone really bad. And I know that... Baumia normally walks in the shadow of His Excellency John Mahama. The reason why Baumia, yes, he does. Because His Excellency said, oh, when I come, I'm going to work with 60 ministers. I'm going to cut down drastically the number of ministers that this government has. This government has 125 ministers. I'm going to work with 60 ministers. Baumia dramatically turns around and says, that, oh, okay, then I'm also going to work with 50 ministers. What I can say is that the people of Ghana are no longer going to be fooled by Baumia. Baumia has had his day for the past eight years where he lied to people like um, the people of Cape Coast. I remember on that day, we were going to launch a manifesto or something, and then immediately he heard that we were about to do something. He announced that he was going to build um, an airport and a, 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 a harbor at Cape Coast. As we speak, that has not happened. He said he was going to bring a sky train to Accra. As we speak, that has not happened. So for me, Baumia has no credibility. He has no, he has zero credibility. So for him to come and say that when I come, I'm going to work with um, 50 ministers, that's, that, is, that is a lie. I don't believe it, number one. Number two, when um, his boss, Nanado, was asked why he's working with 125 ministers, why he promised less when he was in opposition, he said he didn't know, how, he didn't know that that was how the job was. And that after he got in, that's when he realized that he needed that number of people to work with. We are a small country of 30 million people. Look, California is even bigger. The state of California is even bigger than Ghana. They have one gov governor. America has 15 executive departments. Not all that, all uh, 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 millions of ministries that we have currently. They have 15 exec, and, and they have how many, uh, with a population of 500 million, United States of America, how many ministers, secretaries of states do they have? It's not even up to 20. Yet America is being ruled successfully. It's a world, world, a first world country. And we, the third world country, that we go with, we go to them with cap in hand for money, for grants, for loans, beg them for money. We have 125 uh, old people ministers that we are taking care of and then the people suffer how do the people suffer we have to maintain their lifestyles for them so the taxes every day we are being choked choked with taxes we have we are paying covid tax it's only in ghana that we are being we are paying covid tax look when covid came the um, um, citizens of america got um, 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 uh, allowances from from the from 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 the from the government yes but in Ga in ghana we were giving free water and free, free light and later told that because of that, we have to pay COVID taxes to make up for it. That was also a lie right there because in 2020 election, it, it, was a, it was a topic of campaign that, oh, this government gave us free water and free light, so vote for us. Immediately the election was over, they came back and said, oh, yes, uh, we know we gave you free water and free, free, <laughs> free, free, free light, but uh, we have to pay for it. So we are, we are going to uh, impose COVID tax. So you start paying COVID tax. When you buy water, there's COVID tax on it. Baumia says that when he comes, he would um, um, cancel E-Levy. Yeah. Why not now? 
Baumia is part of this government that passed e levy. Baumia is part of it. He cannot he cannot extricate himself from it. Baumia, when, when we talk about e levy, Baumia's name will come up as part of the cabinet that passed e levy. So you sit in cabinet and e levy is passed, and then you say that people are paying e levy, and then you say that when I come, I would I would cancel e levy. No, what all I have to tell Ghanaians is that listen. Who, uh, if you haven't sleep, seen uh, death, if you haven't seen death, look at sleep. This man promised a lot. He didn't do it. Okay. He's promising stuff. Okay. Uh, one minute. He's pro please. <laughs> <laughs> He's promising stuff that will make you vote for him. And then when he, when he comes, he will tell you that, oh, the, the economy is so hard. We haven't recovered from COVID. Okay. We haven't recovered from point. Ukraine, Ukraine war. So we have to maintain a levy. Yeah. All right. Let me read a couple of messages and then I'll come to you, Nanaya. Um, Baumir's claim that he's going to work with 50 ministers. Meanwhile, he has about 319 members in his 40, Please. his 44 page manifesto um, committee. And he wants us to take him seriously. Baumia is a discredited person who shouldn't be taken seriously for once. That's from Maxwell Akpabli, texting from Ayawaso West constituency. Musa says, um, good morning. I fully support the NDC's decision not to participate in signing what I consider is not a necessary agreement. That very security setup should ensure a balance-free election and we need Okay, and should not be compromised by any elements while the Peace Council remains silent. If the Ayawaso West Wogan report is implemented and its recommendations are fully enforced, the NDC will reconsider its stance. Until then, um, it's all empty gestures. Uh, all right. I'll just read one more and then we'll continue. I'll come back to your messages as promised. Now, do you recall that the first deputy speaker, Joe Weiss, said mm -hmm. eight innocent people who were killed were armed robbers mm -hmm. and all deserve to die? Yeah. So how do you want us to sign a peace paper when the Peace Council has become part of the problem in our country? And that's from Prince Henry texting from Kofredia. Nanaya, yes. 50 ministers, this is a step in the right direction. Is it realistic to you? <laughs> What's the question of the mount, Marty, Nidhi? What's the meaning? If a naked person says that he's going to give you cloth to cover yourself, listen to the name of the person, the condition. What do we have now? You see, Baumia is just a blackmailer. Mm? Yes. He's a blackmailer because he wants to blackmail us to vote for him before he does what is right by us. If you have all these great ideas, why don't you implement it now? We have to vote for you to become president when you are vice president. You see, this is the first time that in the MPP, a vice president is standing as a presidential candidate. If it was somebody like Dambuchi, or any one of them telling us that this is what I would do. I wouldn't say anything. Because they are just ministers. But you are in the seat of government. When the president travels, you are the one who takes over. Are you telling me that Nanado doesn't listen to you? It is not true. You see, that one I will say it. Well, that's a question that has been asked many times. I am telling you today, if you want an answer, Nanado is not somebody who doesn't listen. Okay. Now, Nado listens if he knows what you are telling him is realistic, especially if it is an area where he is not uh, um, conversant with. And he said that I am not an economist, so I'm bringing on board an economist. Do you get me? That thing that Baumia is using to blindfold us. Now, Nado listens if you tell him what it is. So you're saying that Baumia has not made these recommendations? I don't think, ah, he ha, if he has made the, everything that has happened, he's part of it. When it was Elev, he came to say, oh, it is not true. If he doesn't want it and he's able to explain, look, somebody went to Nanado with tariff increase and said that there's a need. He told the person that find alternatives. Nanado as a person, not the people working with him. So Baumia cannot come and tell us that he speaks to Nanado and he doesn't listen. Did you see Nanado's posture at the, at, at, at the manifesto launch? What was his posture? He was just, I mean, he was angry as if he wasn't <laughs> even interested in what was going on. It is possible he did not even see the document before he came there. Because Baumia wants to disassociate himself because he wants to be president. Baumia just wants to prove a point. But the president himself has said that the backstop... Please, him. what the president says is nothing to go by because if he's under pressure to come and say, he will say... This is politics. 
if the people down there tell that when you go say a b c d he will say for the for the sake of party uh, 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 um, continuity yeah uh, you party he's not his own man i am saying that when it comes to policy he's the leader he should come and say to say baumia's face he himself stood there and said that he worked with baumia talked with baumia was he lying if you walk with Baumia and talk with Baumia, it means that whatever he, Baum, he did, Baumia was aware. If I walk with you and talk with you, whatever I do, you are aware. If you are my wife, you see, the vice president is like the wife of the president. Mm -hmm. They walk together. They speak together. I'm telling you, you see, when the presidents go off and they go bad, the vice president always wants to pull away. Then we should just uh, take off that position of vice president. Baumia says he wants to pay fees for what? The disabled. So yes. now they don't need fees. The disabled, the blind people in tertiary, the people in wheelchair, even our universities don't have pathway for wheelchairs. They don't have ramps for wheelchairs. Has he ever thought about it? And now he wants to pay fees. With what money? He says he you get money from the scholarship the, secretariat. The, 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 the get fund that they have yeah, capped. Collateralized. They have capped the get fund to pay for, uh, um, collateralize it to bonds, loans. So what is he going to use to pay for it? It is their policy to cap the get fund and they have capped it. Putting the two together, where is he going to? 15 ministers, you should tell us where he will cut. At least his excellency John Ramani Mahama and Alan, they have been able to tell us that I am putting these two ministries together, I am putting three ministries together to the number that I want. They have been able to say it. Do you get me? His Excellency is always, uh, John Mahama is always saying that the Ministry of Transport, you don't need an aviation ministry. You don't need um, a railway ministry. They all can come under transport. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? When yeah. you, you, you read the Great Transformational Plan, Alan has said that infrastructure, in our own uh, uh, manifesto, ours for 2024 20, uh, hasn't come. In 2020, we said 40 ministries. Do you get me? So we and when you go into our manifesto, it tells you the ministries that we are going to put together. Information, communication, we are going to put it together. So he should tell us which ministries he's going to put together to get the 50. Because you see, even the constitution says that you should have 19 cabinet ministers. So 19 cabinet ministers. So he, he has even gone off. <laughs> has he read the constitution? They said 19 cabinet ministers. He should come and tell us. That ministry A, B, C, D, I'm putting together this, this, that. So why, right now, okay, the 128 ministers that he has, does he talk to them? Does he work with them? When the president travels and he becomes the president for the moment, does he talk to the 120? He accepts the 128 with all the, 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 the trimmings. Special assistant here, this, there, this, there. He, he accepts it. So why is he coming to blackmail us? That if you vote for me, I'll do it. But he should do it now. Mm -hmm. And let us see that he's doing. Some of them are easy to do. He said he's going to bring back, back the um, rotos. It is easy to do. Removal of e levy very easy to do. Do you get me? Remo removal of pollution tax, easy to do. Do you understand? As for the taxes, reducing the flat rate, uh, changing the tax regime, it is easy but to do. But he's not president yet. Ah, he's not. He's the vice president. Please, I beg you. When Nanadu took Baumia, he said, "I am bringing an, an economist, economist. Yes. because Nanadu didn't want Baumia as his running mate. He wanted Al Haji Halima Mahama. Really? Yes. He wanted Haji Halima Mahama, and they said that Baumia is an economist, deputy <laughs> governor at the Bank of Ghana for the economic. Um... He's the chairperson of the economic management team. team. That one is not even constitutional. Sometimes I don't even consider that. I am talking about the man Baumia, who said he's an economist. He is an economist. He, he had all these questions for uh, the late Misata. We, we see you, Jenna, sometimes me, I'm one of you. I, I, I have a problem. Because you should ask Baumia to answer those yes, questions today. Questions. Those questions should be answered through what we see in the economy. But he has not answered those questions through the economy. Today he's in the seat. You should ask him those questions. But Umiya is not going to do anything differently from what is happening today. He just wants to aggrandize himself and to be what? A, 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 a distant, a, a, the first northern president of the NPP.
So. That is all he wants. It is about himself and his family. It is not about doing anything. He said Ghana is on his mind. If Ghana is on his mind, then he should go to Makola to see that tomato that used to be 20 cities, a bucket, is now 200 cities. Mm -hmm. He should go and ask those who are doing kinky that today a bag of corn that used to be 150 mm -hmm. is now almost 1,000 Ghana cities. Mix. Beans. Beans. Uh, beans. Because I've heard it's being imported it's from Burkina Faso. It used to be 300, now 3,200. Uh -huh. Now they have even contumbe from China. I hear yesterday. <laughs> Sorry? Uh -huh. They said there's contumbe from China. <laughs> Sold at the, the market. Yes. Open market. Yes, open market. Mm. Because you don't know the difference. Everything is imported. You see, you have a manifesto. You said you are coming to look after SMEs. You see, the, the, the arch enemies of SMEs are imported goods. But you don't have an import substitution plan. Okay. But Umiya just wants to aggrandize himself and now he's become a copycat. Who That's is he copying? Uh, he's copying uh, the no, NDC no mama. He said that he has people who are going to do coding and the women's fund. Is it not the bank? The same thing, thing that we said. It's not the same thing. All right. Rodeline, mm -hmm. you have said you would work with 40 ministers. Yes, we have. That's... Um, that's less than Baumia's proposition. Exactly. But it's, I mean, it's, it's along the same lines. It's along and the it same. is in the book. So you are And we have, we have given you the list yes. of those that we have matched. And ministries that yes, all the we ministries no longer that we have. have matched. And we have also said that um, certain public sector institutions and organizations will also be matched so that we can have a very lean government. Because the cost of, doing, um, of governance in this country is quite high. Um, Baumia's 50 um, member ministerial whatever I'm asking myself if it includes um, the special assistants and all those people working with him he said the ministers so okay maybe but he should have given us a list of the ministries that he thinks are very crucial for him to be able does, does he give us the ministries because that's very important for us to know whether um, he's, he's concentrating on the ones that are going to move this country forward and not just frivolous ones. Um, you see, when Baumia speaks, I sometimes wonder why he has not resigned. <laughs> why? Because for a, you know, for a vice president who seems to think that your president is not doing the things that you have probably advised him on, and we all know that Baumia was brought in because he was an economist. We all know that he was not an MPP member. We all know that the main reason for, for which he was brought in was because he was an economic waste kid. Mm. To answer your question, I just um, did okay. a, a cursory glance over the manifesto. He doesn't mention the exact minist ministerial positions. Okay. He just said that... An efficient system of governance would require even fewer ministers. Therefore, I would have no more than 50 ministers. And that's where it ended. Okay. Just like he would, he would have a flat rate with no percentages. Okay. That's fine. So. Exactly. <laughs> and actually, the ministries are dead. Well, our, our ministries are here. Yes, but I, 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 I think mm -hmm. that for us, we have an attorney general, which is a statutory mm -hmm. requirement. Finance, economy, trade, and industry. We have a minister of state for trade and industry. Minister of State for Finance and Economy, Food, Agriculture, and Fisheries Ministry, that's three. Four, Foreign Affairs and Regional Corporation, five, Defense, six, Education. Um, we have a Minister of State for Basic and Secondary Education. We have Health, Minister of Health, a Minister of State for Traditional Medicine and Medical, Mental Health. We have a Minister for Interior. We have an Infrastructure Minister and a Minister of State for Transport, which is Transport Infrastructure. Roads, highways, railways, aviation, public transit systems, ports and harbors. We, ha we don't even have an aircraft. And we, ha we had a whole minister aviation. of aviation. Minister of State for Communication and Digitalization. Minister of State for Public Housing, Water Systems, Sanitation, Waste Management and Sewage Systems. So it means that we're going to tackle all this under one roof. Um, we have a Minister of State for Public Housing. And, and all that. Then energy and natural resources, that's lands, water bodies, mining, oil and gas, renewable energy. And the Minister for States of States for Lands and Mineral Resources, Youth and Sports, Local Government and Decentralization, Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation, Tourism and Culture, that includes chieftaincy, religious and creative arts. 
labor, that's manpower, development, and employment relations, women, children, and social welfare, PWDs, aged and vulnerable groups, all included. And then we intend to merge and consolidate statutory departments and agencies with similar functions and overlapping okay. mandates. So this is what Alan Shramateng is saying. We are giving you the deal. And we are also going, we, we further explained how we are going to do it and how we are going to make sure that we revise and implement all the new methods and the new ways of doing business in this country. So um, as for Baumier's 50, until I see the ministries that he intends to have, um, I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to comment so much on it because I don't believe in anything that he says. Anything? No, I don't. Even the ones that are along the same lines as your policy well, promises? He, he, he might, he might, it might sound like it's along the same lines, but it's not the same. There's still a difference. Okay. There's still a difference. Okay. All right. I'd like us to quickly um, talk about the, his plans for the educational sector. He talks about providing free tertiary education for persons living with disabilities across the country. And that includes everything. So accommodation, tuition, etc. And he plans on getting this money from the GET Fund, Scholarship Secretariat, <coughs> and he includes, by the way, general scholarships. And he's pledging this if he becomes president. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had some plans for educational reform from the GTP. Yes. We've had uh, plans for free first year tertiary education um, from Mahama. So it appears, you know, uh, all of our aspirants who are speaking have tertiary education in mind and, and at heart. But this is specifically for persons living with disabilities. Then I'll start with you because uh, you mentioned some other things that persons living with disabilities need, aside free accommodation and free tuition. They need drums in school. Mm -hmm. They need the equipment that the Braille. That yeah, they them for reading. For reading. reading. Now, they have even laptops that they use. Mm -hmm. they need voice those, command. Yeah, it's called a voice command. With, it, they, they have voice command. Voice command. Yeah. They need all those things. So which aspects of the tertiary education? So what about the others? They don't matter? So the aspects, it, it, basically tuition and accommodation. No, what about the, but other, they say the, the others? The Maybe others the etc. We'll cover no, the, the others the in um, the GHS, the others in the secondary okay. schools. Because you move from one end to the other. Do you understand me? So what about those ones? What are they doing for them in terms of um, learning equipment, learning materials? What are they doing for them? Because you don't just jump to, especially with this special group. It's not everybody. There are autistic children around. Yeah. They don't even have the care they need. Mm -hmm. I have friends who, 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 who have relocated abroad because of their autistic children. Mm -hmm. Because the care for autistic children mm -hmm. is not available in this country. So what is he talking about? Disability, what is he saying? Disability is not only a blindness. There are other things. Do you get me? Like that. There's a learning disability. I've forgotten the name. And when it comes, I, I've forgotten the name. There are so many other disabilities. Dyslexia. When the person is walking around you, I mean, the person is not physically disabled, but the person has a learning disability. What is he, is he, is he going to do about it? And what has he done about it? You see, now everybody is sending me text messages that oh, I should calm down. Yes, I'll calm down. I'll try. <laughs> but the point is that <laughs> Uncle Sam Piali, good morning. Good morning, Uncle. <laughs> good morning, Hobson. Good morning, everybody. But uh, uh, um, the point is that sometimes I, I, I become on edge when... Good morning, Julie. I know you say that I didn't greet you. But you are there. <laughs> you haven't done anything about it. You are not a minister like Zeta was. You are not an ambassador. You are the second person, the second gentleman of the land. When you move, you move with an outrider. Do you get me? You have protection, policemen, military around you. We pay for you to be comfortable. So
So if he was unhappy, if he was excellent in an adult, granted that he doesn't listen. Hmm? If he doesn't listen, why didn't he leave, resign? Leave the position. Because if you are in a place and... I can't resign. Yes, I can't resign. You should have resigned. When you should have resigned. If truly resigned. that is what it is. I, I can't you resign. You can still resign. Because right now, quite, no, but right now he is nowhere. The man is not working. <clears throat> he has left his post. We should write a letter to him that we need him to be working. <laughs> Otherwise, we will not pay him because we employed him. He has left post. He has abandoned post. What do you mean? He has a, because he's on the it's campaign. A campaign. No, he's on the uh, but he's a campaign. Has he not abandoned post? Using state resources to campaign. He's using state resources. Hasn't he abandoned post? Where is he? Napo resigned as energy minister and now he is doing his thing. Nobody is giving him headache. So you should also resign. Because he cannot combine the two. It is very clear that um, um, Baumia is not a multi-taxed person. It's clear that he is not. Yes, because he can't do the two. <laughs> Where is he? The only Are time you aware he... of any function that he's unable to perform at this ah, But the president is performing all the functions. Any time that you have... Today, Kamala Harris in the USA is doing most of the things that Biden was supposed to do. Because he is the one that they are going to put forward. Why is it that today we see Nanado doing most of the official duties? Nanado should be resting three months to time. We have three months old. Three months to time, Nanado is still opening uh, um, Jomoro oil, whatever, <laughs> this year. And, and still yes. giving people posts. And still giving people posts and defending uh, um, Snit. And you're saying that Baumia should be doing these things? Yes, of course, because you are, they are putting you forward. You see, Nanado could not even call Baumia my flag bearer and leader. He said the vice president of Ghana. But he is the vice president. I am saying that at the function of and the manifesto. That is a political function. I'm speaking as a politician. He is the flag bearer and leader of the MPP. Nanado did not acknowledge him as, as such. He said the vice president. Which is not wrong. Ah, it is not it was political, wrong. Politically, it is wrong. Function. As a political function. It's a political function. Was it a state function? It was a state function. The political function, the reason why they were there was because of Baumia. As the, the leader MVP. and flag bearer, so he was him. not addressed as that. So it means even another himself is not too sure where the trajectory is going. Mm. So okay. all these education things he's talking about, what money is he going to use? Because he have cap scholarships, okay. they, they have cap uh, uh, get fund, everything is going okay. into their pocket for consumption. Okay, Nana, I'll read a couple of messages and then we will both um, have our take in two minutes each, mm -hmm. okay? Uh -huh. All right, Nana Ya knows that nobody can force President Nanado to say anything. Dr. Baumia has never dissociated himself from anything this government has done. Mm -hmm. If Nana Ya thinks that Dr. Baumia can do all the things that he promises now as Vice President, why didn't Mahama allow his boss, Professor Mills, to do the 24-hour economy when he was vice president? Every candidate has his or her vision. That may differ from his boss's vision. New era, new vision. Bold solutions and more jobs. Baumia means business. And that's from Master Planner texting us from King Tampo. All right. Um, good morning, now. I don't understand why Baumia is making promises as if he were in opposition. What can he deliver now as vice president? Soon Dr. Baumia might promise to provide one man one... <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> Never mind that. I, 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 I would not in the year... Were we not in the year 2024, um, Vice President Dr. Baumia said that the next new patriotic party government will provide loans for young people to rent decent mm -hmm. homes. They were making... They are making life difficult for us, the youth. The price of cement is now 100 Ghana cities, and we can't even afford to buy it to build our own houses. Additionally, the introduction of the e-levy charges on every transaction, even one Ghana city has now become burdensome. Now, he says he's going to remove it. Posterity will judge him. And that's from Kotoka Courage, texting from the Volta region. And I'll just read one more, and then we'll go to Zeta. No, All right. Yes, yeah, she also friend. hasn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So both of you. So, so tell Baumia, um, <laughs> someone, please but tell Baumia me, that you I, I don't understand you. your message. I'll come back to it. Um, landlord from Bogadi, like Zeta. Yes, Zeta. yes. okay. So you. officially, for the record, I just want to say that this um, free education, free tertiary education for uh, persons, persons with disability, is an NDC idea that has been stolen by Baumia. <laughs> Why am I saying this? On um, Tuesday, 8 September 2020, that was when we as a party announced 
this policy. 2020. 2020. In the 2020, we announced it. And just last week, during our um, Youth Manifesto launch, the pledge to the people mm -hmm. that we launched um, at the UPSA, um, we said that we we're going to give free um, tertiary education to persons with disability. So this is like a, like my sister here said, this is a copycat um, um, policy that Baumia has taken from the NDC. And because we are the originators of that idea, we have a very fair idea of how we want to implement it. His Excellency John Mahama has said that it's going to be free. Mm -hmm. It's going to be free and you don't have to apply for it. Once you finish your SA, S, uh, senior high school and you qualify to enter into university as a person with disability, you are going to get that um, um, free education in the university. However, when you compare it to how the MPP led by Baumia want to implement it, they say it's going to be a scholarship scheme. Scholarship scheme means that you have to apply for it. It's not free. You, if you apply and... It's, it's free. They said it's a scholarship scheme. Ours is automatic. Scholarship, you have to apply for scholarship. Scholarships are not there. Yeah, um, you, have you have to apply. So when you apply and you qualify, they give you. If you don't qualify or it's full, the, the number of the quota is, is they've, they've reached the quota. They could say that, okay, we've reached the quota, we, we can give you. That's so people, normally, but yeah. this is now a policy. It's, but it says scholarship. Oh, it's going to be a nah, policy. Now, it says scholarship. Ours is free. There's a difference. Are there specific disabilities that no. you're going to it's, it's look into? free guarantee that the, next, the following year, if you do get the money, you will get him because there will be a new batch of entrants coming in. Yes. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Thank you, Zita. Rodling. Okay. So for us, um, I think that Baumia's um, idea of giving them scholarships, I just, I don't know how many PWDs we have in the universities, as, especially the public universities. And I'm looking at access, even um, accommodation, as he says, the, the halls of residence, how many of them are uh, PWD friendly? Um, at the end of it all, we are talking about um, different types of um, disabilities, and they all have different needs. So I don't really know how he's going to be able to work out all these things. Because, you see, we have not even got the um, specialized education uh, units for these PWDs. Um, a lot of them go to school, they come out, and we find them sometimes on the streets, or they go back to their villages. So I think that it, it would be more important for him to have come out with an idea of how we are going to be able to tackle the education of PWDs. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I'm looking at a situation. Look, let's look at the mental health situation. Just take a look on the roads. You find all manner of people. It's, it's disgraceful mm -hmm. to come into a country, the capital city, and you find naked people walking around. They have not been able to do anything about that. The biggest me uh, uh, mental hospital that we have is right in the city of Accra. Yet we find all manner of people walking around naked. It, it, it doesn't speak well of us. We're having people in wheelchairs begging on our streets. What is he doing about that? He can still do something about that. I think that we should have a policy that should get all these people off the streets. Even within our mental institutions, the occupational therapy units are not working. How many occupational therapists do we even have in this country? Occupational therapists. Therapists, yes. What's that? Those are the people that when you go into mental, yeah, you have mental issues, disabilities, they teach you how to do things. Okay. You understand? To get back on your feet. Okay. To, uh -huh. How many do we have? We used to have a very vibrant one at the um, mental hospital in Accra. And they used to do doormats and things to finance themselves. But it's no longer there because we don't have that many occupational therapists. And these are things that PWDs need to be able to get back. You know, they feel like a marginalized group. So you need to be able to integrate them into society, not by taking them, carving them out as a special unit. You have to make them feel. Some of them don't want to be left out and be treated differently. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we think that you should enhance the District Assembly's Common Fund that gives um, something to, to disabled people. At least give them something to be able to live decent lives and then also our main goal is that we are looking at free education from primary to tertiary level for yes for everybody for, for everybody. every Ghanaian child yes
From primary to tertiary. From primary to tertiary. Free. Free. The that strategic, like a very the strategic object objective under the education sector is to provide free compulsory early child, basic, secondary, and tertiary education for all Ghanaians of school going age. How that, are you going to fund this? Okay. So we are saying we are creating a special window within the GET Fund with an independent board of trustees composed of private individuals of high integrity to which development partner institutions, non governmental entities, corporate bodies and individuals could contribute funds to support the financing of education. So whatever we have come out with, we have found solutions, ways and means of doing them. And for disabilities, we have a, another sector on it. We, we believe that we should treat them just like everybody else. Put them in. But unfortunately, we need to educate more or train more teachers. Because you just can't put them in the classroom and expect that somebody who, does, who hasn't done Braille will have a blind student in a class and not be able to teach in Braille. Okay. So the, 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 there's so much that we can talk about. You understand? There's so, a lot to so, talk about. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. Even our lecturers at the universities, are there Braille books? Do we have Braille libraries? All right. So he can't just say he's going to pay fees for them when all these things have not been put there in place. There are more things to be considered. There are more things all to right. be considered. Thank you so much, Woodley. Now, read a couple of messages and we'll wrap this segment up. If you think Dr. Baumia has copied your work, why don't you take him to the copyright office and sue him? Dr. <laughs> Baumia went to the people and after listening to their needs, yeah, he right. captured it all in his manifesto. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's, it's not from any second-hand source. And that's from Master Planner texting from Kintampo. All right. Uh, Kizito says... <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we, we have to end now. Um, Elliot, I see your message. Unfortunately, I can't read it. Um, Kizito, I see your message. Evans Dinku from Garu, I see your message. We can't read all of them. But please keep the conversation going on our social media platforms with the hashtag TV3 New Day. Thank you, Rodling. Thank you, Nanaya. Thank you, Zita. Thank you. Thank you so much. We need to talk about this. I'll tell you why. All right. Uh, now, step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash and pick any number between 1 and 39 and you can win. 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. Win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Ellie Bears love Dewa Chop Money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash. Choose any number between 1 and 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times. Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. If you need any help, please call us on 055-625-9249 or 05 053-247-9879. Afa. That's it. If you haven't cashed out, please do so now. Dial star 439 hash. This morning, we will bring you Community Manifesto and the conversations are getting more interesting as we go. Yesterday, we brought you Community Manifesto from Anya Soutum. This morning, Cookie will bring us Community Manifesto and she is going to be coming um, to us live. I'll bring you the exact location so that you can know if you are in that community right after this break. Stay tuned. Man, I'm saying, oh, yeah, thank you.